Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Rachel Klein and I will be your presenter today. Today we are talking about um, how to import donations. So if you're using some type of online giving platform, whether people can give through your website or go to a designated spot um, of another company, make donations, sometimes even text to give as an option, whatever that might be, or whatever company you might be using, if they are able to get you a text file of the donations that came in through that company, you should be able to then take that text file and import it into Church Windows into donations and then create transactions from that file. So that's going to allow you to pretty quickly get any giving that comes in online right into your Church Windows program, okay? Couple housekeeping things before we get started. Um, there is a handout today, actually. I'm gonna go ahead and share that out with you. Feel free to download that. Um, it's, it's a pretty straightforward process, but um, if you go ahead and open that document or print it out, um, it's gonna just give a quick overview of what we are gonna talk about today. Across the top, it's going to list a few of the online giving companies that we have uh, pre-formatted pre the import for. So if you're using any of those six across the top, um, get the text file from them and you'll be able to import it pretty easily. The program will already know what column headers to look for and then it'll match up those fields and get the data imported for you. If you're using a company other than one of those six, you still need to get the text file in and we should be able to then match up the appropriate fields so Church Windows is pulling in data and putting it into the right spot, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and open up this generic text file that I created and I kind of want to explain what needs to be included in the text file for you to be able to import the data. Okay, so there are four main things that Church Windows has to have included on this text file to be able to import the donations into the donations module. You need to have the who, so the giver, who's making the donation. You need to have information about the giving account that they want their money to go to, how much they gave, and then the, do the date the donation came in. So some companies are going to give you more information than those four things. That's fine, but those are the four things Church Windows has to be able to access and identify when importing the data. Uh, importing the giving, okay? Giver IDs, they can be people's names, they can be numbers, or they can be a combination of letters or numbers. The, how the, the company manages or identifies those people doesn't really matter as long as we match those up accordingly in the import process, okay? Account ID, again, this is the fund or the pot of, 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 or the area where people want their money to go to. In this example here, the column header for the account that's being identified is just called ACCTID. The amount, this is how much they're donating, how much money obviously, and then the date. These are the dates the donations were given. Okay, so as long as your text file has that type of information, we should be able to import it into Church Windows. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and open up donations. Up here at the top under donations, import donations. Here are your different options you can choose from that again are pre-formatted. But if the company you're using isn't here, you want to go down and choose text file. As soon as you select text file, then you need to come in here and you need to identify those different columns and let Church Windows know what field is the date field, what information is coming from the giver name field, okay? So if we pull this file back up, our date field is just titled date. So we are simply gonna type in the word date here, 
Okay, we're telling the program when we import this information specifically which column is going to identify that information. Giver field, this is giver ID. So we're simply going to type in giver ID. And that again, telling the program where to look, what column to pull the information. Amount is just amount. And then the account column is actually labeled account ACCT ID. So we're going to type that in. Okay. So now that the program knows what columns to pull the corresponding information, transaction number, if that's something that's available in your text file, you can put that information here. However, you're not required to, but these other four you are. The f and then you have to specify how the report is delimited. So if we look back at the document, let me zoom in a little bit. You can see, I thought there'd be a zoom. There we go. Oh, let's try this. Whoa, too far. Okay. So if we look here, this is a tab delimited. There is actually a tab between each column. And then here, this is comma delimited. So instead of a tab, we're actually using a column to define the next field. Okay. The report that we're using is tab delimited. There's no commas here. So down at the bottom, this file is, you want to make sure you choose tab delimited there. Okay. Once this is set up, you're going to come to the imported donations tab. And now we need to select that import file to import it. So I'm going to choose select file. I'm going to choose this one called generic. And I'm going to hit open. It's going to take that information that we saw in that report and it's going to pull it in. Okay. Now that the information is pulled into the program, we have to tell it what information is what, basically. So here we had five different givers make donations and here are their giver IDs. So now we have to tell the software this giver ID with all the ones, who does that belong to? Who truly is that person? And we'll say that's Nina. Down here at the bottom, we're going to go to all the twos. We're going to say that number belongs to Carolyn. And again, we're just going to use that report to match who the corresponding people are. You might need to run a report through your online giving company if it's not clear on the text file who's who or what ID belongs to what person. But you should easily be able to go to that online giving company and get a report or find a screen on their website that tells you who's whose name belongs with what ID, okay? Once you make these matches, it's going to save this. So the next time you do your import and say these five people give again, it's going to know who to credit automatically and you don't need to remake these matches, okay? Also note that the ID also doesn't have to match what their giver number is in church windows. It's totally fine. You're matching the ID to the actual individual, regardless of what their giver number or envelope number is. Okay. I'm going to hit save down here at the bottom. And then we're going to come over here to the right, and we need to match now our fund IDs. So these are different pots or the different giving accounts that people specified they want their money to go to. Again, if you don't know, you have to go out to your online giving company and research that information for what belongs where, okay? But once you get your corresponding accounts selected, there is a save down here at the bottom as well. So the next time people give to either 100, 200, or 300, it's gonna know what pot to put that money in, okay? And again, the ID the online giving company assigns to your funds does not have to correspond exactly to the ID you're using in church windows. Just make sure you're selecting the correct name for the corresponding account. All right, I'm going to hit save. Now it tells me all, item, all items have been matched. Click the imported donations tab to create. So I'm going to go back here to the imported donations tab. And just like we saw on that text file, I have two dates, 
I have March 1st and I have March 8th that donations came in. Here are the people that the donations came in from. And I can even hit the plus sign and look even further at what corresponding accounts and amounts they gave. Okay. Once you get to this point, you still have a couple more steps. Up here at the top right, we need to hit create donations. This is what actually tells the software, I want to post these, I want to get these transactions in my database. Okay. Now the donations have been created. This looks very similar to batches when you are working through the enter donation screen. Okay. See the date total amount, how much was cash, how much was check, obviously both of those are zero because they're electronic donations, and how many entries make up each batch. You can come here and hit this little post button to post each one individually, but before you do that, you might want to assign a batch code. We recommend using batch codes to specify or keep your online giving separate from your regular donations. Online giving is nice because it gives people the ability to give whatever day of the week they want to. But if it finds some giving does fall on a Sunday and you want to keep that separate from your regular Sunday offering, you can come up here and choose an online giving batch code that you've created. If you don't have one, hit the green plus sign. And then I'm going to come over here to the right and I'm going to hit apply this code to all batches. And that is then going to assign that batch code to these donations. And then if all looks well and you're ready to post, down here at the bottom, you can hit post all batches. If you want to print an unposted batch first, say you want to look things over, down at the bottom you can hit print selected. But if all looks well, hit post all batches. And we will continue through this not a standard posting day. Yes, we know. And once this screen is empty, that tells us the batches have been posted. So I'm going to close out of here. I'm going to close out of this import screen because I'm done for now. But if I want a batch report, a posted batch report, I can do so up here by clicking posted batches. Here are my two batches with their corresponding batch code, and I can highlight them and hit print selected, and this will give me that regular posted batch report that I would get when entering donations through enter donations. So there's my posted batch report, okay? Now, if you, at this point, I should say, at this point you are done. You have posted your donations. They will now show up on donation statements. They will show up on people's records, etc. If you use the accounting module and you want to then transfer your online giving over into the accounting, I would recommend heading out to our website and watching a couple of our videos that involve online giving and the fees involved. So, you're going to have to account for the fees that are that incur when people give online. Um, the doc, the video, there's a video and a, well, there's a couple of videos and a couple documents out at churchwindows.com in our resource center. I would highly, highly recommend if you're just getting started, watch those videos and print out the documentation. Um, it's going to give you some really helpful tips for being able to account for the fees to get what actually went in your checking account to reflect over in the accounting mod module to make it easier to do your bank rec. Okay. One more thing I want to show you if we close out of here. And I minimize donations. If you look up here, the name of my text file before I imported it was just called generic, but now that I've actually imported it and the donations were created, it changed the name of my text file to the word imported. So this is really, really handy for you as you work through the process of importing that giving to see it change from just the regular name to putting the word imported in front of it, which lets you know that this text file has been brought into donations, okay? So just a little extra step to help keep you uh, keep you on pace with what, what you're doing here when you're entering your, your online giving, okay? All right, that is everything I wanted to go over with you guys today. 